Funny Bones, Posada and His Day of the Dead, Caraveras, by Duncan Tomatillo. Skeletons riding bicycles, skeletons wearing fancy hats, skeletons dancing and strumming on guitars. We call these festive bony figures caraveras. In Spanish, the word caravera means skull. A lot of things are associated with skulls and with El Día de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, are called caraveras. For example, there are caravera drawings, candy caraveras, caravera poems, and caravera toys. The skeleton figures are not scary. In fact, they look as if they are having fun. They are the creation of Jose Guadalupe Posada, and this is his story. In 1852, in a small house in the Mexican city of Aguascalientes, Jose Guadalupe Posada was born. Lupe, as everyone called him, was the son of a baker and the sixth of eight children. Lupe's older brother, Citrilo, became a teacher. He taught Lupe how to read and write. Lupe loved to copy the drawings he saw in prints and in books at school. Cirilo noticed how well Lupe drew and helped him enroll at a local art academy. When Lupe was 18 years old, he began to work at Don Trinidad Pedrosa's print shop. There, he discovered his lifelong passion for printing. He learned lithography. Lupe also learned engraving. He helped Don Trinidad print documents, diplomas, flyers, labels for matchbooks, receipts, and invitations for weddings and birthdays. After work, Lupe, Don Trinidad, and other artisans would gather at the shop. They were unhappy with the job that the people in the government were doing. Don Trinidad invited Lupe to make some drawings for a small newspaper he was involved with. It was called El Jicote, the bumblebee. Lupe drew cartoons for the paper. This was long before he drew Calaveras. In one of his drawings, Lupe drew some local politicians climbing a pole and stepping over one another. By making the men look silly, he showed their greed and other bad traits. Readers of El Jicote agreed with Lupe's point of view and laughed when they saw his cartoons. That year, some of the politicians Lupe and Don Trinidad were against lost the elections, but some remained in power and were angry at them. To avoid trouble, Lupe and Don Trinidad decided to move to the nearby city of Leon. Lupe lived in Leon for many years. He opened his own print shop and everyone began to call him Don Lupe as a sign of respect. He married Maria de Jesus Vela and eventually they had a son. They named him Juan Sabino. In addition to his printing work, Don Lupe began to create illustrations for books and pamphlets. He also taught lithography at a local school. He became successful and well-known in the region. But in 1888, a terrible flood destroyed a large part of the city, including Don Lupe's shop. Don Lupe, his wife, and their son moved to Mexico City, the capital of the country. Don Lupe worked as an illustrator and a designer in several print shops. Eventually, he was able to open his own shop near the Zocalo, the city's main square. One of the men Don Lupe worked with was Antonio Vanegas. He published intriguing stories on large sheets of bright paper called broadsides. The tales were about a wide range of topics, including scary creatures, fires, miracles, violent crimes, heroes, bandits, cockfights, and bullfighters. Don Lupe illustrated many of these tales. Paperboy sold the inexpensive broadsides on the streets for a few cents, and people, even people who couldn't read, bought them. They were fascinated by Don Lupe's drawings. Don Lupe and Don Antonio worked together for more than 20 years. They were always busy, especially every November 1st and 2nd, during the Dia de los Muertos celebration. On those days, the city was full of vendors who sold pan de muerto, 
Sempa Sushil, Alfeniques, and Papel Picado. People bought these and other items to decorate the ofrendas they made for their loved ones who had died. Don Lupe had a lot of work. He was busy all the time. He began using a printing technique that was quicker than lithography or engraving. It was called relief etching. Don Lupe made thousands of drawings over the years. Only a hundred or so are of Calaveras, but they are now his most famous images. Whether he made an etching, a lithograph, or an engraving, he had to draw the image in reverse, the opposite of the way he wanted the finished image to appear. Otherwise, when the image was transferred by ink to paper, it would be backwards. The inspiration behind some of Don Lupe's Caraveras is clear, but for others it is not. We can try to interpret what they mean. In 1910, when Don Lupe was 58 years old, a terrible conflict began. Today, it is referred to as the Mexican Revolution. Thousands of farmers and workers throughout Mexico were angry because they worked very hard but could barely earn enough money for their families to live on. The laborers grabbed rifles, machetes, sticks, and any weapons they could find to fight the government and the wealthy landlords it protected. But the rebellious groups that formed in different parts of the country did not work together. They began to fight not only the government, but one another as well, and things spun out of control. Thousands of people lost their lives. Don Lupe drew caraveras of famous men, but he also drew caraveras of people around him, like the men who swept the streets and the people who worked at print shops. He even drew a caravera of his friend, Don Antonio. Don Lupe died on January 20th, 1913. Many people were familiar with his drawings and his caraveras, but very few people knew the artist who was behind them. It was years after his death that historians and artists such as Jean Charlotte and Diego Rivera began to wonder who had drawn such wonderful images. Today, Jose Guadalupe Posada is not called Don Lupe anymore. He is simply called Posada, which is the way he signed his work. His art is celebrated in Mexico, in the United States, and around the world. Some people even dress like Catrinas and parade on the streets during El Dia de los Muertos. And on that special day, there is always somewhere an altar with an ofrenda to remember the great Don Lupe Posada. What would Posada's Caraveras look like nowadays? Thank you.